Ladies and gents, it's Boom or Bust episode four. And today we have an enclosure submitted by Omi. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this is that it looks a bit different. I have had to paint this enclosure white, not for aesthetic reasons, but because in my infinite wisdom, I decided to swap my 3D printer nozzle from a 0.4 mil to a 0.6 mil, given the advancements in modern slices and the amount of time saving that I would get from a 0.6. I thought, hey, great opportunity. Let's whack a 0.6 on there. However, at the same time, I decided to try and print this enclosure, which actually has quite a significant overhang style shape on the top here as it reaches this point and um, probably a combination of the larger nozzle and also not getting the print settings quite dialed in perfectly for the new nozzle meant that the layers had a couple of gaps in them which meant that the box wasn't airtight it was solid but not fully airtight so i have had to very quickly because i need to get this episode out as, as soon as possible dump a load of thick layers of white paint over the enclosure to completely airtight seal it which it now is this is an interesting enclosure kind of resembles a pyramid and it's sort of the thing you'd see for a home theater style subwoofer actually kind of similar to what i've got in the lounge at the moment with the uh, yamaha yts subwoofer so we have a 12 inch scale subwoofer downward firing and we have this lump here that rides right up to the driver in an attempt to direct some of the cone pressures outwards to the room perhaps we're going to see how well that performs on the bottom here along with the driver we have four aero ports they're not flared and we don't know whether this box is tuned to a specific frequency i don't think omi mentioned any kind of tuning modes or anything like that with the box i don't know the cubic foot scaled either we're just gonna have to find out for ourselves what this does and how it performs now compared to the enclosures we've had so far from episodes one to three you can see this is episode one it's uh the pyramid box definitely is much bigger inside we've got a much larger cubic foot internal volume than the first one however it is fair bit smaller than Derek's V5 box, although Derek's V5 box has quite a large area of ports, meaning the actual chamber itself isn't super massive inside there, even though it looks humongous, this box. And obviously the half wicked one is large because we've got this massive horn section on the front. So yeah, it's quite a big volume for this driver, possibly the biggest volume that we've had so far. And given that we don't know what this is tuned to, we might run into some unloading issues. So I might not make it all the way up to the 15 watts on the watt meter when we do the DB testing. So as always, first thing to do is to drop this on the Dayton Dats V2, run an impedance sweep and see what the graph looks like, see if we can figure out what it's tuned to. Wow, so this looks very different to what we've seen so far. With a ported enclosure, which this is, we should see two peaks with a big valley in the middle. Now, this one has a humongous peak, right down at 116 hertz. And then we have, I guess there's a valley here at um, 283 hertz with the secondary peak up at 315. So this tells me that the box looks like it is tuned mega high. Um, I would say well the impedance dip here is at 283 hertz. Now I'm not a complete expert on impedance sweep graphs. However, this tells me that this enclosure is massive with a lot of ports area and tuned very high. So that's why we have this impedance dip here at tuning frequency 282. However, it's not a super deep dip. It doesn't go right down low. We're still sitting up at 4.2 ohms there. The minimum impedance that that saw for this driver was a 3.5 ohms. So we're still fairly high above that even at tuning frequency. Now the fact that this dip and secondary peak are so close together and so high up tells us that the box is tuned well away from the woofers fs the woofers fs was 129 hertz when we started this series however it has since dropped to 119 so we lost 10 hertz it shouldn't make much of a difference for the um enclosures that we've tested so far but it has dropped a little bit now the fact that this first peak is so high we've got 11.87 ohms here on this first peak tells us that the enclosure is firstly massive secondly the woofer unloads very close to where its resonant frequency is meaning that not only will the driver move freely due to unloading but also because that's where it is happiest moving so we're going to see a huge unload on the lower frequencies here now this tuning frequency of 283 hertz scales to 47 hertz so we should do okay on the higher frequencies in our testing although the box being so big i don't know how much control the driver is going to have of the cone it doesn't seem super happy playing those higher frequencies without some kind of air spring or load behind it but uh, yeah, the lower stuff, the 25 hertz and the 33, I think is going to be in the bin. 
Now one thing I did notice is there's quite a lot of baffle flex where the driver is mounted. This is quite a large area baffle and I think this was designed with three millimeter thickness which scales to 18 mil wood or three quarter inch MDF wood. And in real life scaled up, this type of enclosure made out of 18 mil wood would definitely require some bracing on, especially on this baffle here, or maybe a double baffle at least to kind of strengthen the baffle up or be made out of thicker wood like 25 mil MDF which would scale to five mil on the 3D printing side. The Derek's V5 box here was much, much thicker and much more sturdy. This thing had absolutely no panel flex at all. It's like a brick. And my one, again, like a brick. The Wicked one, although a little bit thinner because of its shape and structure, kind of braces itself in the important areas. But yeah, this one, fair bit of baffle flex, and I think that might further hinder the performance of this enclosure a little bit. So yeah, when you're designing your boxes, really design it as if it's gonna be made out of wood brace where you would otherwise need to. And if it's easier for you, design a box for a real 12 inch sub with all the kind of wood thicknesses that you would use in real life and then scale it down once you've already finished it. It's very easy to do that in CAD software. You literally just need to scale the volume by a factor of 216 or the areas by a factor of 36 or the measurements themselves, dimensions, individual dimensions by a factor of six. So let's put it in the test chamber and uh, run some demos, see exactly what it sounds like. that the highest of frequencies in those tracks were coming through quite okay and uh, yeah pretty potent and definitely getting some decent camera shake going on as well but the lower frequencies were kind of lost and uh, especially when compared to some of the enclosures we've tested in the previous episodes um, huge difference on the lower frequencies so with that in mind let's see what it's doing on the meter we have the door open as always for the first test giving this cabin a sort of 146 ish Helmholtz mode and we have a quarter wave resonance of the cabin at about 180 hertz so the first test is 25 scaled hertz which is a 150 hertz let's see exactly how loud we are at this lower frequency remember we're pretty much unloaded down here on the impedance sweep Whoa, 
that was uh, <laughs> the driver was not happy about that that was fully unloaded I think that was a little bit of back plating there um, I did calibrate 10 watts on the watt meter earlier for that and I uh, went a little bit above that just now Ooh, a 122.8 um, so if this is your first episode previously we've been seeing 145 dBs at uh, 150 Hertz because the Helmholtz mode really really boosts that frequency but it's not doing any favors for us here okay let's move on and see if we get a improvement at 33 scaled Hertz being a 198 <laughs> watts on the watt meter and uh, not really 126.3 so again way way off what we have seen in previous um, episodes We've got a 135 138 previously so 126 is quite far off the mark on the lower stuff so now we've done the two lower frequencies let's move up to some higher frequencies we've got 45 scaled Hertz which is 270 Hertz that is much closer to where this enclosure is actually tuned to according to the impedance sweep at least so let's see what it's doing up at 45 scale hertz mm -hmm. A 128, not really much for an improvement either. We're not seeing crazy high numbers like, you know, in the high 130s, 140s. So I think this box is just massively too big. And uh, last but not least, 60 scaled hertz, which is 360 hertz. And 31 so that's the highest score we've seen so far so yeah not really looking too promising um, let's get the cabin door and seal off the chamber to run the tests one more time so that's the cabin door sealed off let's start at 60 Hertz this time and go back down the other way so are we still up in the 130s at 60 15.3 and a 126.1 so we have lost quite a bit there with the cabin door sealed off 45 Hertz One twenty nine point one. Uh, is it me or is that a little higher than before? Isn't it? So it's actually a little higher with the cabin door sealed off at forty five hertz. Interesting. Now the lower two, the thirty three scaled hertz. Mm -hmm. Fifteen point four and a one twenty one point six. Yeah, it's looking kind of the same. And the the sketchy boy. The 25 scaled hertz, 150. I'll have to really be careful on the drive on this one. There you go, there's 10 watts. Don't want to go much above that. I could hear it starting to let go a little bit. Already. Oh, oh, a 113.8. That's not far off the um, floor noise of the uh, sensor here, actually. The floor noise is uh, 100, 100 dB, so yeah, 130. <laughs> Woo! So working out the average of those scores, the Omi Ramid, Omi Pyramid, comes in at a 127.38 average with the door open and a 122.65 dB average with the door closed. Putting the Omi Ramid in last place so far, but still in boomer status because we haven't had more than five entries yet. So Omi Ramid stays in boomer status for now until a couple other designs come along and perhaps push it off but we don't know what we're going to see next the omi ramid might not be the worst performer we see this is a very experimental series and people are sending in all kinds of wacky crazy designs that i can tell certainly haven't been modeled on woofer enclosure modeling software so we could see all kinds of stuff going on here the foundational design of the omi ramid isn't bad this is a shape and enclosure style that works well and has been used by many companies the reason that this has not done so well in this this test is purely because it is so big so the driver unloads very easily and it is tuned very very high with a high port area so we just weren't able to build any pressure or get any air displacement from either the cone or the ports at the lower frequencies from 25 to sort of 45 really with any decent potency some of you might be thinking was this enclosure hindered by the fact that we a had baffle flex and b the fact that it wasn't completely airtight sealed originally when it was printed well the baffle flex would have had a small impact yes i think if this was 
more solid. You would have seen a bit of an improvement on the DB testing, but that doesn't overcome the fact that the enclosure was massive and tuned very, very high. We still would have seen very similar results here. Might have gained like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a DB perhaps with it being a bit more solid. Now, in regards to the printing, it is a solid enclosure and it wasn't really that the walls were coming away all over the place. It was just that the overhang was a little bit extreme for the current printer and current settings at the top here. And that doesn't really impact the strength per se. It was just that there were a few gaps around the top here where parts of the final line that it was drawing just sagged down a little bit. Not really making a huge difference on the strength. Uh, up here, it's very strong anyway because of the uh, shape and the, the size of it up here. And after sealing it off with many layers of paint, it is A airtight and actually very, very strong, like really rigid all the way up here. It's not got any issues where it's flexing, vibrating, or there's any leaking or pressure coming out from any of this part of the enclosure. The only issue we've really got is a bit of baffle flex on here that definitely would have had a small impact in the scores and that could have been rectified with a bit of bracing or a thicker baffle. If you want to get involved and submit a design for this series, there is a link in the description to a video that details all the instructions and information you need to submit a design for this series. If you're interested in sponsoring this series, either with a logo on the enclosure somewhere here or a sponsored segment or message, then there is an email address in the description as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next week for another episode of Boom or Bust.